let's go ahead and turn off Polyframe. And now that you're all set up, we can finally go back into ZBrush Compositor. If you're just joining us, all we did was make a square document and position our object on the page. So if you want to skip everything else before this and jump right into ZBrush Compositor, that's all you need to know. So now that we're here in ZBrush Compositor, let's talk about some of these options. These are the numbers, uh, basically what you're gonna render out. Again, it doesn't matter what your document size is, if it's uh, 5, 12, 10, 24, whatever. If you choose 2048, it's going to render every, all of the textures you're gonna need out at 2048. Of course, your pixel resolution is gonna determine how detailed you can get. So if you're planning on doing a very large, uh, you know, render for print or have a lot of details in it, you know, choose a larger number. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it at the default 2048 essentially a 2k texture now you're going to see everything on here is pretty smooth if i zoom in here there's no faceting uh, if this were to be a little bit lower like this you know you can see a little bit of uh, faceting in the edges or even worse like this what you might need to do is go over here and just choose choose smooth normals and that'll actually smooth the normals for the render so you get a nice clean smooth render even on a semi low res object but in this case everything's pretty smooth or if you have dynamesh high resolution dynamesh you may not need to do that so i'll leave that up to you if you ever need to reset your path or it asks you where Substance Painter is on your machine, you can click Reset Path and then just select the location. On Windows, it's going to be C, Program Files, Logarithmic, Substance Painter, Substance Painter.exe. Over here, you're going to see RGB, and if you click on this, it's going to cycle between RGB, BPR, and Preview. Essentially, if we had a polypane on here, and if you're kind of new to ZBrush, polypane is essentially choosing RGB, turning off ZAD, choosing a color and then going in here and painting color on here. So you can absolutely go through and paint, you know, if you want to go through and kind of paint the scarab up and give it all sorts of color information. Essentially, it's going to bake all this color information out with no shading information. Because what's going to happen is we're going to put this on a material and it's going to apply the texture map, quote unquote, or anything you've poly painted to that. And you don't want to overlap any of these dark areas in your model that are based on the real-time materials, you know, all these crevices are darker and it's got like a, a preview shadow on there. You don't want to have that end up on your final model. You just want the color information. So that's what this RGB is going to do is essentially send over just the color information and apply it to your model. Generally speaking, that's probably what you're going to want to use when you do substance in a tool bag. However, if you did want to send over the B, uh, BPR information, that's essentially just saying BPR and it would send over exactly what you see here. In fact, if we go in here to our render menu, go in here to our render passes, it's gonna send this right on over. If you go down here and choose preview, if I go out of BPR mode by just like rotating my object, and again, if you get your object off kilter since we've already stored that camera view with Zaplink and our cameras under the draw menu, we can put it right back where it needs to go. And this is your preview. Render right here. In fact, if you go in here to render, you're gonna see it's set the preview automatically. So this is your essentially your preview render. If you wanna send this over, you can do that. But like I said before, we're gonna keep this on RGB. And this color information we don't need. All I really need to do, since we poly painted on this, we can just go and turn this little paintbrush off. You can hold down shift and turn the paintbrush off for all of your subtools. And we're just gonna send this information over. I was about to say, you can't poly paint. Feel free to poly paint as much as you want and send that over as well. In our case, though, we're just going to fill this with materials and dirt and edge, edge scratches and all that stuff. A lot of really cool things we can do. Speaking of materials, if you go over here, you can see there's a specular and glossiness option. This is for the uh, Marmoset tool bag composite. Uh, we're going to get to this in a bit, but basically you can send over the uh, PBR workflow can be either spec gloss or metal roughness. And in fact, if you accidentally send over spec gloss, you can change it to metal roughness really easily. I'll show you that when we get there. But for now, I'm just going to leave that alone. So we've got our object sitting here. We've got the view we want rendered out. We're going to send this information over here to Substance Painter. So we're going to just click that button and let it do its thing. All right, and now you're in uh, Substance Painter. is going to tell you to click the ZBrush icon to refresh the render resource. You follow this arrow over and up a little bit. You're going to see a little ZBrush button. Just click that, and then I'll refresh it. And here is your composite image. It actually kept our uh, poly paint. We can work around that. And in fact, you know, having your poly paint, if you did go through and do a really nice poly paint, having that available is totally fine. The very first thing I'm going to do is go up here to File, Save As. You can see we've got some uh, files already in here. Let's go ahead and just delete these. I'm just going to go ahead and save this as Scarab Working. 
By default, it's going to load up a composite file that you don't want to save over anything. So go ahead and save out a brand new file somewhere else uh, that you want to kind of play around with. So in Substance Painter, you're going to have your layers over here. And if you want to, if we go over here to Window, Reset UI, this is the default layout. I'm just going to keep this for now. Yours may look a little different than this, but underneath the layers here, we have a couple folders. So you can click a folder to open these up. We have Alpha and Shadows, Textures and Color, and Poly Paint. Now in our case, that Poly Paint isn't going to do much. We can actually just turn that off. But everything we're going to do, like all our materials and stuff we're going to apply, or any painting we do inside of Substance Painter, we're going to put, go ahead and put in this folder. Up above here is our Alpha Shadows and Displacement. So down here at the bottom, we have Displacement turned on. If I turn this eyeball on and off, it's not going to make much of a difference in our scene. However, if I click and Alt and left click in our scene, you can see we can rotate this around here. You can see we actually have uh, this model in our scene and it looks a little bit weird. There's a little bit of uh, artifacting here. So essentially what this is doing, if I turn off at this view, if I turn off displacement now, it's just gonna be a flat uh, image. So you can see we can go to the side and it goes really thin and then disappears. Let's go up here to this little screen icon, which is our display settings, scroll all the way down and say uh, mesh wireframe, just turn that on. And you're gonna see what we're really manipulating here is just an image on a flat plane. It looks 3D, and in fact, again, I'm just gonna, you know, to demonstrate that, it's just a flat plane that looks 3D from this view. And in fact, you can hold down Shift and right click and move that lighting around and it'll actually affect your model. But again, we didn't have to do any UVs, we didn't have to decimate or retopologize anything. We literally can just go in here and start manipulating this like a 3D model that's really just sitting on a 2D plane. So let's go ahead and turn off Show Mesh Wireframe. And we'll go back to our layers here and we're gonna turn displacement back on. And you're gonna see when we do this, now we have actual geometry. So what it's doing is taking one of our maps, and we'll get through this in just a second to explain this a little bit better, uh, and giving us a rounded form. Now how I'm snapping back to that view is I'm holding down shift as I rotate and it's gonna snap back to this view. And in fact, just to make sure we're looking straight on at that plane, if you go up here, you see you have perspective and orthographic views, uh, orthographic view is turned on. So that way we're looking straight at this plane. And if you captured a perspective image, that's totally fine. You still want orthographic turned on, so you're looking straight at that plane and just getting a good representation of that image you rendered that'll match up. Now, back to displacement, if I rotate that camera around, you're gonna say, okay, we're displacing that plane into the shape of your object using a map. So let's check out those maps that we brought in uh, using that button, the, what ZBrush Compositor brought in for us, I should say. So we go up here to the project section, you're gonna see it brought in our ALB albedo map and that's literally just what we poly painted, which in our case, we're not gonna use. It baked out an ambient occlusion map for us. It baked out a curvature map and a curvature map is what's gonna be used for like edge wear where that curvature map is light. We can do edge scratching and where it's dark, we can actually put in dirt and you know where things would end up in crevices. And you're gonna see, okay, now we have a displacement map as well. All this really is is a Z depth pass in ZBrush. If we go in here to ZBrush, and we go back to our render menu. And whenever we hit BPR render, it'll shoot these maps out for us. And you can see right here is our depth pass. So really it's taking that Z depth pass and applying it as a displacement. So if we go in here to the shader, you're gonna see we have displacement and tessellation enabled. So if we disable it, it just goes back to a flat plane. If we enable it, we're getting that displacement. The source channel is a displacement channel that's been added and that texture has been applied. And here's the tessellation. So if we drop this tessellation down, you're gonna see uh, it gets less and less resolution. And then the more subdivision you add, the smoother that result's gonna be. So that's cranked all the way up. And if you did wanna do this manually later, all it is is going in here to your texture settings, going here to your channels, hitting plus, adding a displacement channel, which you can see has already been added right here. And in the case of our layer, we have a displacement fill layer with all the other channels turned off, but our displacement or Z depth dropped right on there. And then under your shader, you're telling the shader, hey, enable displacement, choose your displacement channel, and then tell it how much uh, subdivision you want to get the smoothest result. Now, if I snap my camera back to the side here, you're gonna see if I hold down shift and rotate our lighting around, and what that's doing, and let's go ahead and show you this, uh, go to your display settings here, you see we have an environment map, crank up that environment intensity and crank down that environment blur. So you can see if I hold down shift and right click, we're basically rotating an HDR image around to light what's on our canvas here. If we go in here to environment map and we choose something else, let's go ahead and choose these uh, stairs here. So we've got a new environment map. Our object is gonna be rendered with the lights in that map. So we get a different view. Let's go to the street view here. 
So let's go back to the default. I'm just going to scroll down and we'll just choose panorama. So that's what's lighting our image. However, you'll notice is that, you know, we've got displacement applied. If we go back to our uh, layers here and turn off displacement and then snap to the front, it's still going to render pretty much the same. Where displacement comes into play and is really cool. So again, we'll turn displacement back on, hold down shift to snap it to the front view. And again, we're moving our lighting around is you can now go in here to your display settings, turn on shadows. You can change, change this to like, uh, you know, let's go ahead and choose intensive. So now as we move this around, we're getting shadows on our object. So as those lights move around our scene, our object will actually cast shadows onto our object. That's super useful. So that way you don't have to render out a bunch of shadow passes in order to get shadows on your object. And in here you can go here and you can change like your shadow intensity. And if you just want to do, you know, lightweight shadows that are a little bit faster to render, you can absolutely do that as well. This is totally cool and one of the huge reasons why having displacement on your object is really useful to get real-time shadows you can change on the fly. Again, instead of rendering out composite shadows. However, there are limitations. If I go to the side here and zoom in, you're gonna see these antennas that are kind of sticking up over his head. Uh, in real life, those are really thin. So when it casts a shadow, it should just be like a little thin cast shadow over here. But because it's a displacement map that just goes straight out from our plane, this cast shadow isn't going to be very accurate. So in this particular case, if I wanted to do like an extreme shadow across my object, this could be a bit of a problem. Now that's not to say we can't work around it. Number one, you could actually just move your light so that, you know, it can still cast a, a shadow here, but you may not notice that it's not totally accurate in this section. Or you can also do something like what this uh, fixed shadow is. Now a fixed shadow isn't like a corrective shadow. It's basically a static shadow. So if I turn this on, you're going to see it's a fill layer with the shadow from ZBrush applied to it and it's set the, the layer mode set to multiply. So it's multiplying that shadow, that fixed or static shadow on your object. So if you did want to either supplement or replace this real time shadow with a shadow that you get out of ZBrush, you can certainly do that. All you need to do is go in here to your light, choose a light direction, hit BPR render. You're going to see now that shadow is accurate. You can go in here to render, Take your shadow pass, go ahead and click that. We'll just throw this right in here, BPR shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Photoshop, hit save. We'll go back in here to Substance Painter. And in fact, I can just drag this BPR shadow right into our, our scene here. I'm gonna say it is a texture and I wanna import those resources to my project. So I'm gonna say import. Let's go back to our project tab here. You're gonna see we now have a BPR shadow. So instead of fixed shadows being our base color, we can take our BPR shadow and drop it right on here. And now we have this fixed shadow as our BPR shadow. Or you can make a new fill layer. Just click this little paint bucket icon up here. You can take your shadow pass, throw that into the base color, make sure this is set to multiply. We can go ahead and turn off the rest of these channels since we just wanna affect the color here. So now we have those shadows as well as our BPR shadows. And again, you can go through here and you can knock down that opacity if you want to. It's up to you. But if you don't want these, we can go ahead and just delete these out of our scene or turn off the eyeball and we can just use the real time shadows for our object. And because I don't necessarily need to do like really harsh shadows on one side of the object, um, I'm totally fine just using the real time. And again, you can go in here to your display settings, change your shadow, uh, to lightweight, average, or intensive, change your shadow opacity, and underneath the environment settings, let's go ahead and turn our environment opacity back down to zero. We can go ahead and blur that back up if you want to as well. And again, shift, right click, will rotate that environment so we can change the lighting, or you can just drag this slider. You can also make your exposure brighter or darker in this area as well.